It has been over a week now since the peace agreement was signed between Armenia and Azerbaijan, ending the war in Nagorno-Karabakh. On November 16th, Armenian President Armen Sargsyan addressed the nation. He suggested that Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan should resign and that snap parliamentary elections should be held. He called on the law enforcement bodies to prevent any sort of civil unrest and furthermore suggested that a technocratic government of national accord be formed until general elections can be held. According to the commander of the Russian peacekeeping troops in Karabakh, Lieutenant General Rustam Muradov, the highway between Armenia, Goris, Berdzor and Stepanakert will start operating normally from tomorrow. There were concerns about the highway as Azerbaijani-controlled Shushi lies between Stepanakert and Berdzor. In Nagorno-Karabakh, Armenia and Azerbaijan have continued exchanging the bodies of fallen soldiers under the mediation of the International Committee of the Red Cross. The ICRC stated that 200 bodies have already been exchanged and Defence Minister David Tonoyan has met with the families of servicemen who are missing in action. Many soldiers who served in Jebrail and Hadrut have been missing for some time. Their families have been protesting and calling on the government to address this immediately. Minister of Labour and Social Affairs Zaruhi Batoyan stated that sufficient aid in terms of housing, food and finance were provided to refugees from Nagorno-Karabakh. The Ministry of Agriculture also announced that assistance will be provided to farmers that will now miss out on the autumn harvest because of the 2020 war. President of Nagorno-Karabakh, Araik Harutunyan, announced that residents of Artsakh will not have to pay utility bills for one year. This will include water, electricity and gas costs. This is part of an effort by the Artsakh government to encourage residents to return home. On top of this, families earning less than $120 a month will be provided with financial assistance and citizens who have lost their residence will receive just over $600 in support. Houses in need of repair due to damage will have the reconstruction costs covered by the government. In terms of the international arena, Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan and Russian Prime Minister Mikhail Mishustin held phone talks regarding the peace agreement. French President Emmanuel Macron received at the Elysee Palace representatives of the Armenian community in France, including Nicolas Aznavour, the co-founder of the Aznavour Foundation. Macron promised that France would send humanitarian assistance to Artsakh. Macron also held phone talks with Putin to discuss the situation in Nagorno-Karabakh. In Washington, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo called Turkey's recent moves in the region very aggressive. He cited Turkey's support for Azerbaijan, as well as Ankara's actions in Libya and the Eastern Mediterranean. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said in a meeting with the ICRC Secretary General in Moscow that Russia will make every effort to prevent the revision of the statement of Russia, Azerbaijan and Armenia regarding Nagorno-Karabakh. In his turn, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced in a BRICS summit that the trilateral agreements between the presidents of Russia, Azerbaijan and the Prime Minister of Armenia created conditions for a long-term settlement in the region on a fair basis in the interests of Baku and Yerevan. And finally, political consultant Eric Kakopyan gave his take on what action plan Armenia should take in terms of the military, politics and the economy. Kakopyan furthermore reacted to the Armenian PM's recent statement and explained his message to Armenians who are despairing.